Alright guys, welcome back. This is the Unity side of the login project. As you can see here, we've got a scene running already, but there's no scripting, there's nothing done on this project. Just um, just a scene is imported. That's part of the assets that we have on the, um, on the GitLab. Actually, it's on my GitLab. If you're interested to see it, you can find them over here in my GitLab project. Link will most likely be in the description. If it's not, go ask on Discord. Uh, those assets are readily available. And as you can see here, there's nothing else. So I've got login scene and all the artwork is there and the script folder is empty. So my point is, this is a new project. <laughs> and with this new project, we are going to have a single script. So what we're doing is MVP. It's gonna be a very, very simple way of getting our point across. So a minimal, minimum viable product. Um, we are going to get started today by creating the login script. The login script will be on top of, it could be on top of the camera. It is going to have reference to the input field we're going to be using for password and username. It's going to hold a, um, a function that you can click on a button and it's going to go to that function and then we can start the whole flow. It's going to keep this sort of information actually. So I'm putting it on top of my main camera. It could be really anywhere. Now it's going to be important for us to create two things, uh, actually three things, two input field and also the button for submitting. So I'm going to go ahead and do a very, very minimum UI here. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I want to create a input field with text mesh pro import that real quick and just put it somewhere at the top right because it fits within my scene actually. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I can see it, it's over here. I want this to be a little bit bigger though. So let's do, we could do 600 by 50, 75 maybe. Yeah, that could do it. Um, I've just created one, but actually what I'd like to do is create myself a image. And that's gonna be my sort of uh, container. So I'll call this the container, anchor it at the top right. And just do a rough UI real quick. So something like that, move it a little bit more in the center, give it some padding. Yeah, that could do it. So here's where I'm going to be storing all the information and then there's going to be a sign in button at the end. I'm going to be using a vertical layout group and I can just put my input field beneath it. That's going to be my username. I'll copy this. That's going to be my password. I'll no, I won't copy this again, actually. I'm going to create a new button with Text Mesh Pro again. That's going to be the sign in. And this happens sometimes. It keeps bugging out when you have a vertical layout group. You have to move it around and then it's going to go and fit where it should be. What I'm going to say, though, is I want this to use hmm, to control the child size and I want to keep the force X pin. Now, I don't want to force X pin on the height, however. And I can go ahead, make the button as big as I like by removing the control child size. So there we go. Something like that could work. I'm also going to make sure that I anchor things in the upper center. So this is centered. We could give it a small title. So let's call this login. Why not? <laughs> uh, put it at the top. And the cool part here is that you can actually go and start modifying height of thing and it's gonna displace object if you need to have like some padding at the top you can add it directly with the vertical layout group so here you can find padding and if you need padding in between stuff we can go and insert a element so let me show you real quick i'm gonna give myself a padding of 25 here then i'd like to have some padding in between the username and password well all i do is create a new anything really put it in the middle delete the element and just modify the height for 25, for example. And I'll call this a spacer object. There we go. Okay, so we got our little sign-in sign in form roughly around here. I'm thinking maybe I can reduce that to 500. And this like that, okay. There we go. Okay. Now we're ready. I'm going to go ahead and just reduce the size of that because of course we don't take that much space. And now we have our UI that we need. 
there might be a little bit of modification to do such as uh, over here we have the the placeholder decks which we we might want to make this a little bit bigger so it fits within it so font 50 in this case and when you do these modifications, try to do them on both objects at the same time, since they're they're the same thing basically. Um, something we might forget sometimes is to change the text asset. So you have where you type, and you also have the, the placeholder. Those are different, so we have to make sure we change them as well. And I believe you can actually hide the password field. I don't quite remember how to do it. Let's have a look. Okay, so it's right here under the text mesh pro input field. I can go in the content type and change that to password and I believe that if I uh, yeah if I go ahead and I type stuff it just shows up like this though it shows up as a very small yeah let me increase the size of that there we go all right but it did change the placeholder as well that's not cool okay let's reduce that 50 we should be good to go now for some reason I don't see any text appearing on this one but it's the right size, so I don't really mind so much. And I'm going to go and stop working on the UI now. Um, that's all we need, really need at this point, right? So as I mentioned, we have two input fields, and we also have the login button. They're all going to be connected to the login script that we've made earlier. So it's now time to actually go ahead and boot up our Visual Studio and get a reference to all of these. So. We have the script over here. We're going to keep it as a mono behavior because it needs to sit on top of that object. And we're going to go ahead and serialize our first field, which is going to be a private, um, I believe it's a TM pro text mesh. No, it's the input field, TMP input field. That's the type right here. And that's going to be the username input field. What we could also do is make sure we, we do using TMP rope like so and we can remove this part up to you it's your preference uh, this is the password input field and finally we're gonna have a reference to the button uh, it's not gonna be we're not gonna have a reference to the button we're gonna have a function that uh, the button points to so here public void on login click and then something happens when we click on that uh, since we're right here, let's go ahead and, and do a little bit of coding, right? So let's try and just see what is inside of the the username and also the password. We can do so by, well, first I'm going to declare the field here. So string username and do username input field dot, I believe it's text or it's value. Is it value or text? Oh, it's text. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing for password. There we go, okay. And we'll do a nice little debug.log here just to see that things actually work. So dollar sign because I'm gonna be using a string like that, username two dot and password. There we go. Okay, it's time to connect this thing. It's gonna be fairly simple. Our script I believe was on the main camera. So we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop the username in here and the password in there. And then we're going to go on the sign in, which is this, this button right here, I believe. Go under the unclick function and make sure we add our camera in there. Login script on login and we should be good to go. So we're almost at the part where we um, make this work, right? <laughs> so let's type in something or nothing, actually. See what happens. We get nothing and nothing. That's good. Now I'm going to say hello and password we get hello and then password that's perfect so that's actually all we need for setting up purpose we don't need to download anything else we got everything we need here in just that little piece of ui in the next uh video we're going to be looking at actually making the web request so i'll see you there cheers all right so welcome to the second section this part, we are going to be looking at starting a coroutine because we are going to do a web request, but we have to wait until it's completed before we do anything with that information. And of course, Unity being the single threaded application it is, we can use things such as the coroutine to be put in another, it's not another thread, but basically for to wait for the request to be done and then we can move on. And we can do so by using a I enumerator and also a coroutine. So that's what I plan on doing right here. We could do a private. It doesn't matter because we're going to be starting the coroutine uh, from here. So from this script. 
and you may rater. Uh, you don't get it in IntelliSense because you have to use system.collection to see it. So with that being said, I'm going to call this one um, try login. It, what, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the field that we had earlier, take these, put it directly in the try login function. And it says not all code pad return value. Well, let's go at the end and do a yield return null. And now to make sure that this is being called, we are going to head back to the start login function, start a coroutine and do try login in here directly. So the flow hasn't changed. We, exact, we have the exact same thing as we had earlier, but now we have it in a coroutine, which is, which is going to allow us to um, wait for the web request to be done before we go ahead and, and we move on. So um, what we're gonna do, first we have to declare a web request. So to declare a web request, we are going to create ourselves a Unity web request object, which again is not part of the IntelliSense because it's not something we're using right now. So you have to go up at the top, include using unity.networking. And from that point on, we now have our request, which is going to be a new web request. Um, should we do a new? We could do a new or we could just say Unity web request get like so. And it's going to ask us for the URI. Now I'm going to store that at the top here. So I'm going to say private cons. Actually, you know what? Let's make it a serialized field. Serialized field private string. Um, let's do authentication endpoint. And the URL is going to be by default um, through HTTP. So HTTP 2 dot slash slash localhost or if you prefer 127.0.0.1. Two dot and then our port that we use for the backend. That's very important that we find our port. If you guys remember in our backend, we were using 13756. So 13756 slash account. Why slash account? Because if you remember again, our route in the backend is set on a get protocol, which we are doing, and then the URI is account. And it's on port 13756, yeah. So let's go ahead and save this, put it inside of the, the get over here. And um, we're going to go one step further than that. Okay. Because, and I realize we have to go on a tangent here. I'm sorry about that. Um, what we're about to do is we're going to append the username and also the password to the URL, which is a very bad practice, but we are going to change it once we're done with the flow back and forth. The reason I want to do it this way is because we have that through the get protocol on our backend right now. And I want to make sure that people are that are new to anything web related like that. Uh, they don't get confused. So we're going to learn how to do it with get. We know that it's not the right way to do it. We know that it's not the secure way to do it. Our password are not even encrypted in our database. A lot of things have to change, but let's just get things rolling and build on top of that is the optic I'm going for here. Now, with that in mind, we remember that when we tried to log in earlier on our backend through the, um, the browser like that, what we did is say, add a new parameter, call it username. That was my username. And also add a new parameter password. I don't remember what was the password quite. So, hmm. Oh, and I remember we actually called them our username and also our password. And with that information, we were able to retrieve our user account, which is right here. So, and also I believe if we were to just change that, we would create a new account. Yeah. So that created a new account. The last one was create a new account. We can also return that. Uh, again, that's something we should change by the end as well, but let's just keep on, on this track right now. So how did we do that? Well, we added, we appended the parameter. So my username over here and also the password we appended that to the URL and let's do the same thing here for the get protocol. Since we're doing the get protocol, we cannot send any body parameter. Um, it's really hard to explain. You, you can't really send any hidden data. You could say within this because it's a get protocol. Uh, later on, you, you'll get to see that you have different protocol. You have to get post, put patch, delete option head. Those are always you can call a certain URL through the HTTP or HTTPS protocol, but they all have a different way of working. So for example, here in my get, I can append URL, you know, I can put some parameter here. I think I can also do it in post, though I'm not sure because in post, usually what we do is we 
send in a JSON body. So you would have like an object over here and that would be fine. And this would not be in the URL. So it's a whole different thing. But right now we're doing we're doing a get. So let's go ahead and send some query parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and append on top of that. I'm going to say this URL. So what we had earlier, and then we'll do question mark our username. And that's going to be equal to the username. And then we're going to do the ampersand our password and send in the password, of course. That's going to give us the exact same result as what we had in the browser. This is equivalent of doing the browser request we just did. It's a get call. So to launch that request, I'm going to declare myself a handler and I'm going to say request.sendWebRequest. And I'm going to go down right here and say while handler dot is done is equal to false. So make sure you get the right thing here else you're going to get stuck in a infinite loop. Maybe who knows? Um, but you know, it's a while loop. So you have to be careful what you're doing here. So we're going to say as long as it's not done, we're going to do a yield return null. Now, if for some reason the handler gets stuck somewhere and it's never being set at as is done, which shouldn't by the way, because this handler uh, is going to be completed, whether it's an error or it's not an error. So if it doesn't work, it's still going to be done at one point. And we're, we're going to tackle that as well as we go. But just in case for some reason it's not being done, Let's do um, let's do a best practice here and just declare ourselves a float. I'm gonna say the um, let's actually put that on zero. So I'm gonna say float start time is equal to zero, and then every single frame that this is ran because this is in a for loop, I'm gonna say start time plus equal time dot delta time, and we're gonna check are we beyond a certain limit. So if start time is bigger than, for example, ten seconds. If that's the case, we are going to break out of this while loop. Yeah, so as you can see, the break actually highlights while, which means we're going to break out of it. All right, so at this point, the request should be completed. And if it's not completed, that means we have a timeout, which we'll do a little bit more about that soon. But at that point, we can check, hey, is the request um, result a success? So is it a success like so? And if so, we're going to enter this if statement. And if it's not, if it's anything but a success, which we can have a look over here. So if it's not a success, it could be a error, error in progress. It shouldn't be in progress because we just left the is done and another error. So we're going to be checking, checking only for success else. It's going to be a problem. So we're going to say, um, unable to connect to the server for some reason. Okay. But if it is a success, let's go ahead and debug.log something. So debug.log the result we get. And we can do so by calling a request. Uh, I believe it's the download handler.txt. So we're just going to receive a plain text. Um, what is it already? Not this. <laughs> a plain text string that's going to look like that. So a JSON string. Okay. So I think we're good now. Let's give it a try. So my console is down there. That's what we're going to be looking at. That's the only thing we have to care about. Let's hit login. And it actually returns me. Oh, that's a very bad thing. But it actually returns me a um, an account that is fresh, fresh account with no information inside of it. So that's definitely a problem right here. So uh, we're going to have to do a couple of things. We are going to have to handle um, in here, in your, we have to handle if there is no input in the thing. So we have, we're going to have to handle validation of these input before we fire the request. Should be fair enough. And also on the server, we're going to have to make sure we handle that as well. Uh, yeah, we have to do a couple of things for sure. But let's give this a try, right? So let's go back and say this is one, two, three, four, five, login. And it says invalid credential here. I have a feeling that they're not being sent in the right fashion. So I wonder what goes on here. Oh, and I found my problem. My problem was right here. I said this parameter here, our password, I didn't say equal to password. So I got an issue in which my um, my thing weren't sent properly. So if I go back and I try to sign in with the same account, the one I have since the beginning, we got the proper authentication. And I'm going to confirm that it's the right one because it's the only one that has that username. And let's see, we have a couple of account, the weird one I created earlier, this one, the original one, 
and the one with no in, nothing in it, so that, that ain't cool. Um, but it's there, so it works. At this point, we receive the information. So what we wanted to achieve today is pretty much completed, but let's go ahead and, and add a little bit of clarity. I see here that at the top here I have a title. This is actually going to be um, some sort of description, some sort of alert box. So I'm going to say, enter your credentials, something like that. Increase the width so I can see the whole text. Yeah, maybe 600, I believe that's what it was. Um, and I am going to keep in memory this very specific field so I can overwrite it with some stuff. So back on my login here, this is a text mesh pro UGUI. I'm going to call it the alert text. I'm going to take this thing and once we try to sign in, oh, and actually, you know what? Let's actually take the button as well. Yeah, that'd be a nice idea. So private button, button from Unity Engine UI. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this alert text. And when I try to log in, I'm going to change into something like that. So I'm going to say alert text text, sign in in dot dot dot. And just beneath that, I'll use the login button interactable and put that on false. So I'm not going to allow you to click on the button after that. And you know what? It should be up top over here. Yeah. We're also going to take this text and bring it to, for example, here when we don't get a success, we're going to say error connecting to the server. And I can remove that here. Another place where we would need to change this, and it's actually the main place, um, it's inside of the success. Because getting a success here doesn't necessarily mean that you're connected to the database because you got the right information. It just means that the web requests work. Therefore, you can have the web requests work and still have the wrong credential. So here, we're going to have to do some work to find out if we are connected. And if we are connected, sure, maybe display the username in the text at the top. But if we're not connected, um, you know, that, that ain't going to work. So what I'm going to do for the moment, again, another temporary thing, I'm just going to input the text. Again, this is something that you don't want to do because you're putting unsanitized information on top of the player's face. Though we are not in a web browser, so the implication here, they're lesser than, um, than vulnerable. Though we're not in a web browser here, so the implication, of course, is lesser than if you had a uh, security vulnerability on, on your website. But hey, uh, still not a good practice. And I just wanted to point that out. Of course, something we're going to come back to. Um, what else do I want to do? Oh, yeah, reactivate the login button in both cases over here. So if I was successful, I'm going to say interactable is equal to true. And down here as well, I'm going to say interactable is equal to true. Why did I do that and not outside of here? Well, it's because I want to create a section here that says, was it successful or not? This is the actual login. For the moment, it's going to be on default true. Else, we are going to go ahead and do the following. Oh, you know what? I could change that here for uh, invalid credentials. There we go. And we are going to re-enable the button in that case. But if we are successful in logging in, let's put that on no. And let's actually say welcome or something like that. I think we're ready to test this out now. So let's go and make sure our server is running. I didn't say that earlier, but you have you have to have the server running if you want this to work. So let's go ahead and try to connect. This should be an account. Oh, no reference exception. Okay, well, we forgot to put the reference. So let's go ahead and do that. The login button should be right here. And if you guys remember, since we have an account that has nothing in it, technically this should work. Oh, what's wrong? We forgot to set the text as well. My bad. There it is. Okay. So when I press on this login button, we should actually get the welcome. As you can see here, it works for the sole purpose that there's an account that the username and the password is, is nothing, basically. And if we do find the account like this one and, you know, I have the wrong password, it's still going to be successful request. Technically, it's not a successful login, but it's a successful web request. And the web request basically contains invalid credentials in it. But here, um, it, hmm, something we could do just for the moment, right? Just for making sure this works properly is I'm going to go ahead and copy over the invalid credential text like this. And, you know, I, I keep 
promoting bad practice right now, but it's stuff we're going to come back to. I'm going to say straight up, if the request.result, actually uh, download handler dot text is equal to this, let's do is not equal to this, this is true, and else this is false. So let's give this a try. So now if I try to sign in in my account with the wrong password, invalid credential, but now if I type in the right password, so one, two, three, four, five, login, we get the welcome message. So here, as you can see, we got the unsuccessful attempt and we got the successful attempt, which blocked my login button because technically now we should be inside of the game. Um, so everything seems to work. One thing that we could tackle before we go right now is this right here. So validation on the length of the field and also uh, yeah, the length of the field and the minimum amount of character that we could have. Because right here, we, we just signed in with an account that is nothing for username and also nothing for password. So right here towards the top, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of validation straight up the get go. I'm going to say if username.length is smaller than let's do something like three and username length is actually no not n but or dot length is bigger than let's do 24 then we're going to go ahead and return an error so we're going to say alert dot text dot text is equal to invalid username okay then we're going to also re-enable the button. So I'm going to take this, put it here, and hit return. Make sure we hit return. Same thing down here for the password. Invalid password in this case. Oh, sorry, length. So password.length. Oh, and since we're in a coroutine, hmm. Oh, and here, since we're inside of a coroutine, it's not going to allow us to just do a return. So instead, we have to do a yield uh, break, I believe. So we break outside of this coroutine. And just like that, put that here. Invalid password if the length is different. So once more, let's do a final test before we go forward. Oh, we haven't, there's one condition we haven't tested. So we're going to do that as well this time. So first, login. It said invalid username. Now it's an invalid password. One, two, three, four, five. And here we are signed in because it's in a brand new account, basically. So what I wanted to test as well was taking the server and shutting it down right now. So I'm going to hit Control and C. And now it's shut down. And I'm going to go ahead and try to just sign in with anything. And it's going to try to sign in for a while. And then it's going to say error connecting to the server. And then we're allowed to try and again. So that's where I'm going to wrap up this very small section. In the next one, we're going to be receiving a proper user account from the database. And we're going to be converting it inside of Unity as an object here that we'll call a game account. And once we have that, then maybe you can branch out, make your own game with that, of course. Uh, but once we have that, I'll consider the flow completed. And then we can go back and change some bad behavior that we had throughout this. So thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Now, one thing I'd like to finish on today is by creating a game account, which is going to be just a structure that contains whatever we have in the model for the object. Guys, I know you remember under our model here on the back end, we had a username, password, and that would define what an account is. I'd like to get this exact same model um, crossed over to the other side, so on Unity actually. So what I'm going to do is create a new C Sharp object, call it game account. And we are going to declare a couple of fields in here. Uh, it's going to be fairly fast. Don't don't worry. It's something that is extremely fast. It it used to be a lot longer back in the days, but now we have some utilities with uh, with Unity that makes it much easier to do what we're about to do right now. So if you guys remember, when we receive our object through, let's see, through the web here, we have an ID, we have a username, we have a password, and we has we have a last authentication and also a version over here. Um, with JSON text. This is all done with JSON objects. So J JavaScript object something. I don't know what I still don't know what it means. But yes, it's a JavaScript um serialized object, I think. And 
we can actually name our field the exact same way and then use a utility class from JSON utility and have the information put inside of this object. So let's give it a try. We're going to start with a string called underscore ID because that's how Mongo actually calls everything. Um, we have our first field, which, which was just a uh, password, naturally username. Now, as far as password goes, maybe it's an information that I don't want to keep on my site. It's, it's kind of pointless to keep the password. We're just using it for signing in purpose. And once we're signed in, then we should receive some sort of token in which we can act upon this very specific game account. But let's just think about it in, in this very specific example here. We don't need to receive the password. Uh, because we're already authenticated. If we receive a username, it means it worked, right? It means that we made it through the flow and we made it that far. Um, so I'm actually not going to include it and it's not going to be a problem. So Unity is not going to tell me, hey, that doesn't work because you don't have all the field. And one last thing on top of that, we should actually not send it through here either. So later on, once we go and we make this a little bit cleaner, a little bit more secure, we're going to go back in the back end and just say, you know, when you send me back my information over here, when my, my password is correct and you send back everything, retrieve and count, um, just send me the things I need. Don't send me the password. Don't send me sensitive information. Just send me information about my game account. That's the only thing I care about. Um, yeah. So that being said, I'm only going to keep the username and the ID over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an object out of that. So I'm going to go ahead and say, game account that's my new type um, return account maybe the account that's being signed in right now and i'm gonna say um i'm gonna have to pull the documentation on this one so i'm on json serialization and i believe it's right here so that's that's it right here so we use json utility and we cast to a specific um class in this case so this one game account the JSON string is the one we received through the download handler. So we're going to say request download handler text, and that's our JSON string. To make sure this works, I'm going to go ahead and say in my alert text, I'm going to say welcome and then the name of the account. So return account dot username. Um, you know, just, just to give it a twist because we already have the username before that and I want to show that it works. I'm also going to add the ID in front of it. So return account dot ID underscore ID. Just so you can see that we receive information that we don't already have technically. So this is only on MongoDB. Let's give it a try. Make sure our server is running. So the server is running right here. And really I can't I can't sign in with pretty much anything here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Signing in. Oh, we got an issue here. So cannot deserialize JSON to new instances of type game account. Okay, so I see my problem right here. Uh, I forgot to actually clean game account up. I have a model behavior here and let me explain why it didn't work before that. So let's make sure we remove model behavior. And what happens here is when we do a from JSON, what actually happened in the background is that they take your JSON string for sure. And uh, they create a new game account object. And you know that when you do a new something and you have model behavior, you get a problem in UT because usually they don't want you to, um, when you extend from mono behavior, they want you to have that component and drag and drop it on top of a object in Unity, or they want you to do a add component. Um, from JSON actually does a new, and by doing a new, well, you end up with this problem and they don't allow you to do it basically. So this should not work. So let's give it a try. Yeah, that's my MongoDB ID and that's my username. So we got the information back from the account, which is quite cool. And if you were to, um, let, let's just give this a real world example real quick. I'm gonna go back in my account here and I'm gonna say public in um, admin rights, or let's do admin flag. And I'm going to set this admin flag to one if I have admin privileges, and I'm gonna set it to zero if I don't have admin privileges. All right, so what I've done is I've said, welcome and then the name of the person so that doesn't change however if he is an admin so if admin flag is set to one i am going to append space admin and if not then i'm just going not to append anything basically so let's give this a try just to see if everything works right as we always do we do a welcome normal welcome okay and now what it did is it 
created a game account and it looked for a field called admin flag, it didn't find any so it just did not populate it. However, if we go ahead and I go on MongoDB, so right here, I'm going to refresh, see all the changes I've done. So probably like a bunch of new accounts now. Yep. But let's find my account, right? This is the account. And I'm going to edit this document directly in the MongoDB here. And I'm going to say, let's add a new field. That new field is going to be admin flag. And it's going to be a value one. Hit update. And as I refresh now, it's the only one that has admin flag, but since we are returning the full object on the back end, if I go and I give this a try now, anywhere really, so let's do it over here. So um, let's go back and do this. As you can see now, admin flag is being returned directly in the browser, which would also mean that when I run this, because it's the exact same call in Unity, if I do any type of account, we get the normal message. However, if I go on my admin account, which I just gave myself the right on MongoDB, it says, welcome, my username, admin. So we just got something from the database. We just signed in as the admin and we pretty much made it through. So that's where we wrap up the flow. At this point, you take the game account. So you take this thing that we made right here. You take it and you bring it anywhere you wish, right? So this is your account. And as you just saw, we can easily add field inside of it. So if you want to say a, um, the character name of this person, because that's the username, right? But then inside of the game, they have an account, they have a character. Well, you can say this is the character name right here. The only thing that will matter, right? So if you do have a character name like this, is you're going to have to fill in that information. How do you fill in that information? Well, you're the one that gets to choose that, but for sure, you're going to have to add it here as well in the account schema, which makes me think, and I don't want to do it here because that's not a backend video, but eventually I'm going to go in here and say, this is an admin flag type of number, right? But I'm not doing it this episode. I don't want to mess things with the video order, but here it is. So I hope you enjoyed this part. We now have a working flow, a unsecure working flow, a unfinished working flow and a unpolished working flow. But we have one, and I hope that you might have understood something regarding uh, web-related stuff. So when we come back to this project, we are going to upgrade our protocol to get uh, to post. So right now we're using the get protocol. We're going to update it to post. We're going to create a page for, not a page, but we're going to make a new route for creating account and a new route for logging in, right? So we're not going to be using the same route for both. When we come back, we're going to do that. And that's just the thing I'm thinking on top of my head, but there's a lot of things we have to do, like encrypting the password and, and so on. Um, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you soon in the next video, which is going to be about one of the things I've just mentioned. Okay. Thank you. See you. Bye.